everyone, it's Carolyn here and I'm so excited to share another interactive process video with you. The Bertie Brown Picture Perfect Stamp Set is set up perfectly for many interactive techniques. Today, I'm going to show you how to do a peekaboo flip card. It's a super fun technique that changes the image on the front when you open it up. I've done the coloring of the images behind the scenes in order to focus on the assembly of the project. And before we get started, I created this little graphic of instructions for the pieces that you'll need to create the card base. If you want, take a quick screenshot of these details for future reference. Once you've trimmed your panels, you'll need to do some scoring. On the front panel, you'll need to score at 2 and 3 quarter inches from the left edge. On the inside panel, you'll need to score at 4 and a quarter inches from the left edge. And then on the back panel, you'll score at 5 and a half inches from the left edge. Next, You'll want to fold all the panels on their score lines and perfect the creases with a Teflon bone folder. This will help cut down on the bulk of the card and ensure that everything aligns properly. So if you can, try not to avoid this step. And I should mention that all of the previously mentioned measurements are good for either a horizontal or vertical oriented card. And I'm sure that once you see how easy this all comes together, you'll have a million ideas of your own. This next step is also important to making sure that this technique goes off without a hitch. I'm using the square die from the square shaker window and frame dynamics to cut my apertures. It has the exact same inside square measurement as the Polaroid shaker frame die. I'm carefully adhering the square die to the right side of the front panel and it's important to make sure that your aperture is cut to the right of that back flap. After running it through my die cutting machine, I've removed the die from the front panel and I'm sliding the inside panel inside the front panel, making sure to align all the edges of both. Hopefully your brain doesn't explode after hearing all of my references to front, inside, and back panels. Once all the edges are aligned, place that square die back into place and run both panels through your die cutting machine. I used a metal shim to help assure that the die cut through all layers and I ran it through a couple of times just for good measure. Okay, off camera, I also cut two of the Polaroid shaker frames from Smooth White cardstock and two speech bubbles using the Peekaboo Wheel Dynamics, also from Smooth White cardstock. And now, I think we're ready to start assembling our card. I'm a clean and simple girl, so I wanted to keep this true to my style, but every card needs detail to give it some sparkle. So I'm stamping the front panel using the all lined up background stamp and some sweet tooth pigment ink. You can either mask off the back flap of that front panel or just fold it under so it doesn't get ink on it. And you might need to ink up the stamp a couple of times just to make sure that all the pattern gets transferred to the panel. I also heat set the ink off camera so that it wouldn't smudge when I assemble the card. Now I'm going to apply tape render adhesive to the front of the inside panel. Make sure you apply it along all of the outside edges and around the aperture. Part of the fun of this technique is to make it look seamless when you open and close the card. So making sure everything is good and stuck is important. Now I'm going to place the inside panel inside the front panel, again aligning all of the edges and the apertures of both panels, similar to how we did when we die cut the apertures. And this is why I like using tape runner adhesive for this step instead of liquid adhesive. It's nice to have a little wiggle room before you seal everything up. Okay, now I'm adhering some quarter inch double sided tape to the back top edge of the inside panel. And it's important to get it as close to the top edge as you can. If you're nervous about being perfect, you can use 1 8 inch double sided tape instead. It's a little more forgiving and will assure that stray adhesive won't keep the card from working properly. I'm partially removing the release paper from the double-sided adhesive and I'll fold that back. I always like to do this with strong adhesive to give myself a little bit of grace when sticking things together. Now I'll adhere the folded edge of the back panel to that double-sided adhesive and what you'll end up with is a sort of a Z-shaped card base. You can see that I'm being careful to align the two panels. My trash can has seen way too many boo-boos because I was in a hurry to stick things together. I think I mentioned earlier that I colored the images from the Picture Perfect stamp set off camera 
in order to focus on the technique in assembly of the card. I also die cut the images using the same square die from the Square Shaker window and frame dynamics. And now I've applied tape runner adhesive to the back of the dog image and I'm inserting it into the apertures so that it sticks to the inside of the back panel. It's a tight fit, but if you're patient and precise, you can pull the edges of the inside and front panels away enough to adhere the image. Once you know that the image is good and stuck, you can move on to the next step, which is to apply tape runner adhesive to the back of the cat image. Now you need to open the card so that the front panel flap moves into position. Position that cat image inside the aperture and adhere it to the back side of the front panel flap. Again, it's a bit of a tight fit, but you've already done it once, so I'm sure you've got the hang of it now. Just lift the edges of the inside panel up a bit if they get a little stuck. And once you know you've got everything in place, it's time to give it a little bit of a test run. I don't know who engineered the original idea for these cards, but they are a freaking genius in my book. I just love how the images swap out like magic. Okay, let's get started on the finishing details. I've placed two sentiments inside my Mini Misty, one from the Picture Perfect stamp set and one from the Lucky Dog stamp set after doing a little bit of stamp surgery. I'm stamping them onto the Polaroid frame die cuts using Black Licorice Hybrid ink. I've placed the two speech bubble die cuts inside my Mini Misty and I'm stamping the word Meow from the I Need You stamp set and the word Woof from the Lucky Dog stamp set Again, doing a bit of stamp surgery. As long as you're careful, cutting your stamps doesn't hurt a thing. I've added some foam squares to the back of the Just Be Paws Polaroid frame, and I'm adhering it to the front of the card, making sure to align the apertures. I didn't remove the release paper from the top foam squares so that I'd still have the ability to jiggle things around a bit before committing to the final stick. Better safe than sorry. Now that that's in place, we can do the exact same thing with the inside of the card. Apply foam squares to the back of the other Polaroid, remove the release paper from all but the top foam squares, position and align the frame, and stick it to the inside of the card. Then you can remove those extra release papers after you've made sure that it's in place. I've added a foam square to the back of the Woof speech bubble and I'm placing that to the left of the dog image on the front of the card. And I'll do the same thing on the inside of the card with the meow speech bubble. I didn't show it on camera, but I added some ellipses at the end of the Just Be Paws sentiment with a black marker so that the recipient knows that the sentiment will be finished off on the inside of the card. And that'll do it for today's card. I hope you enjoyed this technique and you'll give it a try for yourself. And if you haven't already, be sure and subscribe to the MFT YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of the great content and inspiration that we have here for you. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.